with the new GM coming in. Now, even though in this situation, it seems like he will be the one who ultimately will wield the power and Chuck Pagano will be out of there. Unfortunately, for this guy coming in, a lot of guys will come in with the mindset of, how did that coach survive an awful situation like this? And does that, does that inherently put me at a disadvantage? Does he have the, the owner's ear more so than me? So right, right away, your relationship is starting off with you skeptically looking at the guy who's already survived. On top of the fact that you have to learn his style, his philosophy, his view of players, his view of game day and roster management, the draft, free agency, you're right. It doesn't. It usually doesn't lead to success. Usually, what happens is that guys already have some preconceived ideas about this is where I really want to take this program. And in a year, I'm going to take it there. And that usually means that that year that you're holding over with him becomes a waste. That doesn't mean it has to be. But those are a lot of the things, the preconceived notions that you already have in your head. How does it get spelled out, though? Take us in there. I mean, I can't believe Jim Mercer, whoever the new GM is going to be, said, hey, guys, just work together. You know, I mean, yeah. does there have to be some lines to find? The new GM that's going to come in, does he want to know, I have control over the 53-man roster? I, I mean, does it need – should it be that defined before that hire See, is those, made? Those are, those are the things that I'm talking about. There's going to be questions that the new GM is going to want answered because of the fact that Chuck is the holdover, and you're going to want to understand, okay – you're going to want to ask ownership, how do you really see this working? Do you really want this to be truly collaborative? Because even though ideally you may want it to be, yeah. the new GM is going to feel a little bit at a disadvantage here because he survived an awful situation, and a situation that obviously owner didn't think could survive anymore. So, yeah, you're going, to want, you're going to have to talk about a lot of those things, about how are we going to decide who has final call on draft day, who has final call on the, on the 53-man roster, who has final call on the game day 46-man roster, who has final call on all transactions, free agency, the draft. Those are a lot of things that have to be spelled out there on top of then turning to the guy and going, okay, now that we got all that stuff lined up, let's see if you and I can drive yeah. here and build a football team. 